Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here, and I'm a kick business coach, and I'm on an absolute mission to help you find your purpose in life, to help you love what you do for work every single day, to help you be the rock star that you are meant to be, to make more money than you ever thought was possible, and to have more time freedom so you can actually enjoy the life that you're living. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth from lifeonfire.com and i um, very excited to bring to you the Instagal herself, Sue B. Zimmerman. How's it going? It is going insta-awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be doing, we're going to overuse hashtags in this particular <laughs> episode as much as we can. <laughs> I love it. So um, I'm fired up to have you here today because um, I've just been watching you explode online and just totally just knock it out of the park. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, build a blog or build a podcast and everyone's trying to figure out the secret sauce to building out their brand online and becoming an expert for something. And so what I want to do here today is I want to dive into, you know, what led to that rapid growth, you know, some details about Instagram and why it's so insta Awesome. <laughs> and then we're going to dive into a couple other pillars of what we call pillars of a life on fire. So before we sure. dive into those things, give us a quick background on, on just, you know, your entrepreneurial journey. You know, how did you end up as Insta Sue? <laughs> <laughs> so my journey goes way back, kind of like you, Nick, to my childhood um, in terms of my entrepreneurial journey. Um, I have been exposed to an entrepreneurial father who worked super hard and I, in order to spend time with him, I would go with him to work which was an automobile parts store and I was the girl sweeping the floor, filing the mufflers and the distributors but more importantly I loved being at the counter where the customers came so I could interact, engage and really understand what good customer service was so that was kind of ingrained in my DNA at a very young age and my dad brought home model paint from the store and I used to use it to hand paint. Um, I was really crafty. I used to use it to hand paint barrettes, which are clips that you put in your hair. And I was the kid that brought them to school to, and sold them at recess, even though I wasn't supposed to. And the money that the you know that that gave me really afforded the things that my parents weren't willing to buy. Mm -hmm. So I really loved that not only was my self-esteem from being creative at a young age, you know, kind of etching in, but the money was really somewhat um, empowering to be able to buy things that you wanted that your parents wouldn't get. So fast forward, graduated college, degree in nutrition, which I've never used, but I do eat healthy every day. <laughs> um, and the job that I was offered in after college, um, had fallen through so I had to figure out and scramble like what the heck to do to make money to pay for my rent so what I did was um, what I was passionate about at the time which was hand painting clothing so Nick I was hand painting boxer shorts in the early 80s Whoa! faster like we were I was selling them off a push cart like they have at Faneuil marketplace in Boston and kiosk yeah. you know and um, I couldn't keep up with the demand I as and soon as I for boxers Boxer shorts, yeah. You're probably wearing a pair right now, right? I am. I am. They're not painted. I kind of <laughs> wish they were. <laughs> yeah, so I painted them, and then um, we quickly realized that the demand was so strong that we needed to silk screen them. So we started silk screening them. And I just ask, what were you painting on them? What, what, um, what oh, the, okay. Uh, you know, why were they yeah. flying off the shelves like this here? Okay, so we did all the colleges. So I'm a Tar Heel born uh, and a Tar Heel dead. And one, you know, the whole Tar Heel chant, the UVA chant, University of Richmond. Um, at the time, the word was yuppie. We did um, the Duke and Bush kind of presidential election. So we kind of seized opportunities that were Hallmark esque, like cards, um, and and painted them on boxer shorts, Father's Day. Um, but the colleges, which was really explosive, so we went to a trade show and set up our booth five by seven, me and my business partner in boxer shorts, and um, we sold so many so quickly that we ended up doing uh, trade shows in Chicago and Dallas. And my first year in business, age 22, we had done a million dollars in sales. Wow. Yeah, and that, so the mindset um, set in really quickly of doing what you love 
you know, saying no to the things that you don't want to do, and really just passionately embracing every day as if it's not work, but what you love doing. So I had four years of insane success with that business, Explosive. We got licenses with Disney, um, The Little Mermaid, The Simpsons. Um, if I could get some Little Mermaid, you know, box of shorts, <laughs> I, I'd be, I'd be happy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So we just. Um, so I experienced big success at a young age, and that gave me the confidence to just keep doing what I love always. And so fast forward, I've had now um, 17 businesses. Kind of crazy, wow. right? Um, and those businesses have all worked in the space that I'm in for what's right for me, for my family, and just what I wanted to take on. And so a couple of those highlights is what led me to Instagram. So you want me to, I'll share a yeah, few of those. I, I think I think one thing I want to drill down on real fast is, you know, with what we talk about with Life on Fire all the time as we come back to, um, you know, it's about the journey and not the destination. And what I love about your story is that, and I know we only have a short amount of time today, so you, you gave us the fast version, but there's so, such a powerful lesson, which is you've got, you know, you took something that you were passionate about that you love doing and you focused on enjoying the present and the now and the journey, where yes. so many people look at it and say, you know, what, I'm just going to keep driving in that traffic or working for, you know, someone that they don't like and waiting that something – is going to break through later or retirement's going to be better or even as entrepreneurs I mean how many people do we all know that are entrepreneurs that work their butts off don't even make any money anyway you right. know and don't, and don't enjoy it so I think that right. like that just from a mindset perspective and stepping into that you know clearly you've been outside your comfort zone to go through all those different businesses and so tell us about if we fast forward to Instagram so um, you know what? What is the opportunity with Instagram, and why are you so excited about it? And and then we'll dive into how you turn this into a business. Yeah. So you know, Instagram. I stumbled upon Instagram through my teenage twin daughters. You know, I am someone who always has my antenna up, knowing when to seize opportunities, and really checking out what my twins are doing because the twins are really the teenagers are really setting these trends as far as I'm concerned yeah. and they were always looking down at their phone and I asked them what the heck they were doing and they're like mom we are on Instagram don't even start using it because then you're going to start teaching it because at the time Nick I was teaching social media to in and around the Boston area so I'm very versed on all the platforms because I've always had my own business and I realized that my success was going to be through marketing my business sure. so um, having my store on Cape Cod is where I really discovered the insane success of Instagram which was using it to get people in the door at my store and seeing sales explode over 40 percent in one selling that season. So that, so, like, I, all the light bulbs went off for me in that I wanted to teach other entrepreneurs, other business owners how to experience the same success because so many people are challenged with not having the time to do it all, yeah. Uh, overwhelmed with social media, barely able to getting through doing what they need to do in their business, and Instagram really allows you to have fun by showcasing what you're passionate about, what your business is all about, um, you know, stories about products that you're selling or employees that you're featuring, and so I did a little bit of that. But more importantly, Nick, I empowered the people. I empowered my buzz agents because uh, Subi do their buzz agents um, to really. Um, know that part of their job description was to check in on Foursquare, tweet twice a day, um, post to Facebook, and more importantly, post two images to Instagram. So all these teenagers, as you can imagine, have 500 to 1,000 followers because they're on Instagram all day. And by having them share posts to their friends, mm -hmm. they also contributed to the traffic that came in. So I was like, holy cow, this is amazing. So I really dived in deep. I read every blog post. I followed all the big brands. I immersed myself into this business opportunity, if you will. And the big light bulbs went off when I attended Brendan Bouchard's Experts Academy out in California a year ago, May. And I was in a room with all these online experts or expert people that wanted to become online experts. And I was noticing that no one really understood how to use Instagram or if they did they were just simply taking a picture and uploading their drink or the hotel 
and no one was tagging or geotagging or strategically using hashtags. So after the four days, on the last day, all the aha moments went off for me where I was like, I can teach this to the world because I'm in a room with 800 people that don't know how to use it. it. So I'm going to own this space. So what I did, Nick, is I, I took my cell phone and I put it in the tree in the woods when I came home and I took my dog for a walk and I, I literally said, I am the Instagram gal. I'm going to teach the world how to use Instagram to grow their business. And that video sits on YouTube today. It's pretty funny to go back and watch it. Um, but I kind of manifested and declared what I wanted. And mm. I worked like a crazy person for the past year, year and a half um, in this space, loving every minute of it. I've never worked this hard in my life. And as I said, I've had 18 businesses. And I am loving the connections, the relationships, the reach the impact that I am having on other people's lives and other people people's business has been priceless and that's what keeps me going every day that that opening up my Instagram account and getting direct messages or messages for that matter and comments from people who are now telling me they're leaving their job um, because of the success that they're having or they finally figured out a social media platform that they love um, and that they can do throughout the day. Um, so yeah, so it's been it's been really exciting. And then more importantly, um, you know, teaching experts like you the power of Instagram. There's so many people at the top that don't even understand it. Yeah, and I want to I want to dive into a couple things there because I think that from a mindset perspective. You did something that for many people is so hard to do is that you just declared that you were going to be the expert, right? You made that <laughs> video and, and that's awesome and congratulations to, for you to doing that. And you know that's like what I did when I started Facebook advertising and marketing five years ago is, is at some point we all have to just, just put the flag in the ground and say, screw it. I'm that person. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. I didn't even know what that was going to mean to be honest, yeah. but I knew that there were names associated with other social media platforms and no one has claimed Instagram. I'm like, oh my goodness, could yeah. I really, like, this is what I want. I love photos. And just real quick, Nick, I want to let yeah. you know and all, all the listeners know that eight years ago I was on QVC teaching scrap, the scrapbookers, the scrapbook industry, how to embellish their photos. In fact, do I yeah, I can show you this. So I was teaching people how to use double-sided tape. It was actually toupee tape that we could not patent, so the business kind of failed, but it was a great experience. And I was on QVC, and we taught people how to embellish their photos and use tape and beads and cabochons to bring their photos to life. Now, this was when scrapbooking was just such a rage, and it was awesome. And it's so ironic that now, fast forward eight years, I'm okay. teaching the world how to embellish their photos on Instagram using filters and great third-party apps yeah. and, and videos. So it's just, I think visually, my mind always has, from a, as a young child, I notice mm -hmm. everything around me all the time, what people are wearing, what they're saying, and and that's part of the reason I'm able to seize business opportunities because I see trends and opportunities before other people do. Yeah, you know, I, I think that there's there's a lot in there. I mean, there's there's you making the decision and declaring and then having the confidence to step into it because a lot of people say, all right, even if they declare they want to be the expert, then someone will say things like, well, who are you to consult someone on that? Like, like who are you all of a sudden to be the expert? And, and, and if people can just do what you did or do what I did and just step into it and just know that if you've bought the courses and if, and if you've gotten results, so like the fact that you've used this in your business is so imperative that to be an expert, you proved it on your own businesses. You know, So if you don't have a business yet and you're looking to become an expert, go out and get you know, an actual client, get them results. And the fact that you said, you know, you increase sales by 40%, that's why people want to hire suit. That's because it's not just followers. It's not just the little things. You're an entrepreneur, you're a businesswoman, and it's real numbers and math. So it's like, get the customers, make it tangible, prove your worth. And then people are going to hire you all day long, you know? And so, so I love it. So lots there. Um, and tell us about, so if someone is um, new to Instagram, 
what are three tips that you would suggest for them to get results and start using Instagram and start seeing some success with it? Great question. So, um, three tips. You know, I could go on all day with this, just to let you know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in I'm gonna bring in three tips that I that I see a lot of businesses uh, making the mistake of not doing. So a lot of businesses don't even have a relevant bio. Um, and you can use up to 150 characters to create that bio. And it's really important to have all your keywords. And when I say keywords, Nick, I mean those words that you use on Google Plus or Twitter, your hashtags, whether they are unique, like hashtag life on fire, or whether they are more general to the industry that you serve. So, um, so you can ha so to have those keywords in your bio so people know what's important to you is really important and there's a way to lay it out so that you can grab somebody's attention quickly and it's not like it's not like you write sentences with punctuation you you use emojicon sometimes if it works for your brand to let people know really quickly what you do because you have seconds to make that impression sure. so your bio is what really um, people look at first and foremost and in that is also a great avatar and I always recommend uh, your beautiful face unless of course you're promoting a brand or um, you know for me on my Subi Doo account I have Subi Doo Cape Cod and I have my logo but I do you know I have multiple accounts on Instagram and so it's important just for people to see and recognize your avatar being the same face that you use on Twitter and on Facebook and really Rec, you know, be able to recognize you quickly. So number one is a great bio with rich keywords. Number two, Nick, is having a really great hashtag strategy. And so on Instagram, on each post, you can actually use up to 30 hashtags. I'm not saying to use 30 hashtags, but honestly, when I started out on Instagram, I did use more hashtags than I use now because I was really trying to figure out which hashtags were working and which ones were attracting my ideal customer. So, um, so it's if you're new to Instagram, I suggest that you open up your notes in your phone and create your hashtags that work for you, and you can copy them and paste them and put them on, you know, in Instagram in your secondary comments. I have to say this. I'm going to go a little deep, but and I won't spend too much time. But I want anyone listening to know that when you use your hashtags and have a hashtag strategy, it's important to use them in the secondary comments, not the initial comments. And um, the third one is, quick, you know, to on hashtags just real quick. So yeah. for someone that has no idea, they're not on Instagram yet, and maybe they're not. They don't do much on Twitter. So how would you quickly describe just what a hashtag is and how do you find meaningful ones for your business? Okay, so I always say the magic on Instagram is in the hashtags. It's all in the hashtags. And so for me, I use hashtags that are um, my own personal hashtags that I've created. Um, and I'll, the, like SBZ tips, if you search that hashtag on Instagram, it's all my Instagram tips and you can open up I almost want to say like a page of seeing what those tips are so the hashtags curate content but some of the really popular ones Nick are moving so quickly that your content gets lost in the feed as it as more people use it so when you can come up with your own hashtag and actually say follow my hashtag Instagal live okay so here's one of my hashtags I'm going to bring it on, okay? So follow my hashtag Instagal Live. You will see the community that I created when I did my course on Creative Live. Everyone is there using that hashtag, engaging, so that eyeballs get on that hashtag. So it brings people to it, it, it. You can use it as a search engine if you are like, I'm not even on Instagram. Where do I start? We'll start seeing what. What, what your industry does by doing it using it for market research um, because you can search hashtags and see what other people are doing so for you Nick you know podcasts podcasters um, mm -hmm. and you know absolutely life on to be in every single post that you curate because that's your brand yeah. so um, so hashtags are really important to use um, to grow your grow and attract your ideal follower because people follow accounts that they get value from mm. so if you're gonna give value within the hashtag that you say you are you, that you're using people will come back for more information does that make sense yeah 
Yeah, totally. And and would you say that so if you find hashtags like like for example, um, if a target market for myself or other uh, others uh, you know watching or listening is entrepreneurs, would you advise that or is it just too busy that you're going to lose some of that community building aspect of it? So I would use it because entrepreneurs is something that people search every day and you just might get a few people wow. to come over to check you out. But I would also use it like for lack of a better idea, Nick's, you know, Nick, Nick's entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs of Nick's tribe. And that's a long one, by the way. You don't want it to be too long. Yeah. But I would come up with unique ones around that. So okay. because you are someone who's a thought leader and teaches, so having words to that um, is a good idea as well. Um, I, I also use Instagram, you know, Instagal Live, Instagram Expert, Instagal. But other people use some of those too, and off and also Nick. Some people crash tag your hashtag. Um, for example, with Nike, people put the word Nike in their feed just to get eyeballs on their post, mm. because Nike is the number one hashtag on Instagram. Oh, oh wow! So Great. people use it strategically. I do not recommend this to any business owners. I come at Instagram from a very authentically growing community standpoint meaning that I don't say follow for follow shout out for shout out follow, you know follow me I'll follow you like for me it's all organically growing a community based on the content that I'm sharing and mm -hmm. they come and follow you organically and that's how I teach it as opposed to you know I always say do not ever ever buy followers everyone starts with the big zippo zero so you know, when you have 16 posts and 10,000 followers, I know right away that you've purchased your followers. Um, and then I, th I think, like, can I really trust this person? Are they being authentic and true to themselves and understanding that everyone has to grow a tribe or a community or followers? And it, it's so worth having the right people follow you than to have a ton of people following you. Interesting. Quality over quantity and doing it the right way, which is awesome. And so, okay. And um, I think I may have, so that was number two. Is there another another Instagram? Insta yeah. So po yeah. So having a posting strategy. So a posting strategy can be so many things. I can list off, you know, five or six of them if you want. Um, you know, for, for example, we took our hashtag photo right before this interview. I'm like, yeah. let's take a photo so I can put it on Instagram because I want people to know that you and I are connected and are going to be working together and I want to share that with my community. And by doing that, Nick, some people that are in my community that don't know who you are will start following you because I'm going to tag you in that. Right. And um, so, so doing photo, you know, I always say doing photos of events that you attend or speak at. Now, you don't necessarily have to be a speaker to, to post an event because most events, as you know, now have hashtags. Um, I'm doing a live event in Boston, and my hashtag is SYTS, Sail to Your Success Boston. And I'm sure when you do your events, you have a hashtag. Um, and people follow the hashtags before, during, and if they can't attend it, after the event and even if it's a virtual event you can still see the visual content on Instagram if you tell people to use that hashtag for the event. Nice. That's huge and I think it, it all comes back to what, I, what, I, what I'm gathering is just it's a way for a year really building community and that community is becoming that tribe for you and that tribe of advocates and recommending you or, and then ultimately buying your stuff our products and services. Absolutely. And does that take a long amount of time to, to, to get to sales or? You know, that's, you know, for my, okay, so for my product, okay, so I'm going to share two two real stories. Mm -hmm. So for Subidu, I saw the sales increase and people are like, how do you track your Instagram sales? Well, my store is super small and I talk to every customer or the employees are required to and when they check out, we want to know what brought them in the door. And so often they're holding up a picture of an Instagram photo. So I had them tally the say like the sales that were attributed to the that. I mean, I'm talking, you know, this is not like a big high traffic area of people but I have really great quality people that shop in my store so I was able to put those numbers together another example though Nick is I posted using the hashtag Cape Cod and Wellesley and I attracted my hello $50,000 client 
Jill Boudreau, who's a real estate agent in Wellesley. She was following the same hashtags as me, and I kept popping up. She's like, I see you everywhere. I need to talk to you. She booked a time trade appointment. We met at our local um, tea shop in Wellesley, and we sat down. The next day, she handed me a check for $15,000, and I, that was full disclosure, the biggest check I've ever been written in business to date, like in one like 12 hour period. And it was pretty darn exciting to know that she found me on Instagram. We live in the same hometown. We had never met each other. And, and she's like this amazing client that I have so much fun with. Now that that's just so awesome. I think that um, I, I think that we we've got to wrap up just because we're um, we're at the uh, end of our time slot here, and part of that is because of all my tech <laughs> challenges. But so that you guys know, um, this is like a little little appetizer. This is just a little <laughs> taste of all the knowledge that Sue has, and uh, we've got so much that we're going to be doing together um, throughout the rest of this year, and uh, we're going to be featuring her on our Life on Fire Virtual Summit. So. This is just the beginning of just that little plant the seed now because I just love what you're doing, Sue, and I love just the, the growth. And I think what's so much fun is for everyone to, to follow you and, you know, to learn from you. But the other thing is to watch the journey because what I'm most excited about is just seeing how you continue to rise and that it, it's an example that anyone can step into their purpose and to have a passion for something, seize some opportunity and just run with it. And you know, you're outside your comfort zone. You're, you know, every day is a new challenge and you're just, you're taking it by storm and taking the market <laughs> by storm and it's super exciting. So how can people get in touch with you and, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, so I'm one of the lucky few, Nick, that has my name everywhere, Subi Zimmerman. If you Google it, everything comes up, but that's my website. That's one of my Instagram handles. I would love for people to um, follow me on the Instagram expert account and take a screenshot of this video and let us know that you saw this and use the hashtag life on fire. Boom. That's, a, that's a challenge. <laughs> that is a challenge. So, so everyone just hop on that, take action on it, join into the conversation, take the picture, follow Sue, and, uh, and uh, drop the hashtag life on fire. And so I'm super excited because we are going to be uh, doing some work with Sue and Sue's training others about how she's doing what she's doing. We're going to get some consulting as well. And uh, we're going to take the life on fire Instagram page to a whole new level because quite frankly, we're at <laughs> ground zero. No one's doing it worse than us right now. So Well, this is going to be exciting for everyone to kind of see your growth there. Ooh. So yeah. Yeah. I love it, and it's just, it's so crazy. I mean, for me, like you said, with the antennas and just seeing where the market's going, um, I, I just, it, when when you see, you know, Generation Y and a lot of the young folks, and they're not, you know, I've had, you know, interns, and they're not even on Facebook, and they're using Instagram, it's, it's just such a shift, and I mm -hmm. love that you're ahead of the curve, you're willing to share it with everybody, and so um, we're just grateful to have you part, uh, you know, of Life on Fire TV. We're going to be back with Sue in the near future, so definitely follow her up, and uh, we'll catch up with you guys very soon. Cheers. Cheers. I'm here to help you set your life on fire.